In the late 19th century, the Spanish Empire was only a fraction of what it used to be. They held on to Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and a couple footholds in Africa and a few Pacific islands like Guam. However, in Cuba, there was growing demand for independence. The 1870s saw the Cubans fight the Spanish in the Ten Years' War, but the Spanish emerged victorious. Then, in 1895, violence erupted again and the Cuban War of Independence began. Meanwhile, the USA was the great power in the Western Hemisphere and wished to expand their influence. For decades, Americans wanted to take over Cuba. There were attempts to buy the island, and there had been a few attempts by filibusters to take the island militarily. Plus, the organizers of the revolution, like Jose Marti, were emigres living in the United States. So the US was pretty tied up to Cuba. Back in Cuba, the Spanish were rounding people into concentration camps where many would die of hunger and disease. The Yellow Press in America used this and a few fabricated claims to rouse the US population to demand war. The US government was also unhappy about the guerrilla warfare, as it was causing heavy losses to the large American investments on the island. In February 1898, a US battleship, which was sent to protect US interests on the island, sank in Havana Harbor. The sinking was probably an accident, however the press fabricated the story, so although war wasn't President McKinley's desired option, he was forced into action. With the support of the vast majority of Congress, the US Navy blockaded Cuban ports. In April 1898, war broke out, and it was clear that the US had the upper hand. US ships were dispatched to the Philippines and defeated the Spanish Navy in the Battle of Manila Bay. The Filipinos had, just two years earlier, rose up against the Spanish themselves. However, their revolution ended in failure, and their leaders were forced into exile in Hong Kong. The United States transported these leaders back into the Philippines to lead the revolutionaries against the Spanish. These forces besieged Manila and declared the Philippines a republic. In June 1898, because of its now strategic position, the United States formally annexed Hawaii after they helped overthrow their monarchy a few years earlier. And they strengthened their position in the region by seizing Guam from the Spanish. Back in Cuba, American troops were able to take Guantanamo Bay, a naval base they would lease off the Cubans a few years later and they landed near Santiago, hoping to take the city. The Spanish were able to put up some resistance. However, the American forces, which included Buffalo soldiers and the Rough Riders, were able to defeat them at the Battle of San Juan Hill in El Caney in early July. The former battle was where Teddy Roosevelt earned his fame. Santiago eventually fell, and the Americans continued to occupy the city for the rest of the war. They then turned their attention to Puerto Rico, and despite numerous battles, they could only capture the southern half of the island. But with the loss of their navy, the Spanish could not launch a counterattack, so signed for a truce on the 12th of August. In the Philippines, however, the Spanish and the American forces were unaware that the truce had been signed. Both sides resented the idea that Filipino revolutionaries would take the besieged capital, Manila. So they planned a mock battle, which allowed the US Army to take the city, while the Spanish peacefully withdrew. The peace deal gave Cuba its independence, however they were under America's sphere of influence. The Spanish Empire had, in effect, ceased to exist after they gave the United States Puerto Rico, Guam and the Philippines. However, the revolutionary element in the Philippines remained, so the Americans had to fight a longer and more costly war with the Filipinos to assert their control. 